Well, good morning, everybody. I think we'll get going, because uh, we're just after 9.30 now. So I'd really like to extend a warm welcome to all of you. And this is actually our sixth annual Go Eng Girl program. And this was a program that was initiated in, uh, by the Ontario uh, Network for Women in Engineering, ONWI, as a way to encourage uh, young women to learn a little bit more about the engineering profession and the kinds of careers that you can have in engineering. Now, my name is Mary Wells. I'm, I'm an engineer. I, and for those of you that don't know, uh, most engineers you can recognize because they'll be wearing a little ring right on their pinky, a little stainless steel ring. For the older engineers, it may be iron, so it'll be all black and corroded. But for the, the younger engineers, like myself, it'll be, uh, <laughs> it'll be stainless steel. And I graduated from McGill University in the late 80s and then went on to do my PhD. And I'm currently a professor in mechanical engineering here. And I'm also privileged to be the Associate Dean for Outreach. Uh, so we do a lot of programs to promote science and engineering to kids. So many of you may have heard of our Engineering Science Quest programs, ESQ, which are for kids sort of that have just finished uh, kindergarten, so we get to them really young, uh, all the way up to grade nine. And then we do a lot of programs that are focused specifically on women in engineering. So Go Eng Girl. Last year we did something with the Girl Guides um, a badge day so they could get their engineering badges because now Girl Guides uh, can get an engineering badge, they can also get a technology badge and things like that. So things have really changed over the last 10 or 20 years. And then last year for the first time we went, ran a new program called Catalyst which was an engineering conference for young women that were in grade 11 and it was a little bit different in the sense that they actually came and stayed with us at the university for a weekend and that was a fantastic program where they got to learn a little bit about what it was like to be a university student, what student life was like, as well as participate in some workshops and things like that. So I'm really pleased that you've decided to, to take the time, um, especially the parents, and bring your daughters and, and uh, nieces here uh, to learn, to spend a little bit of time to learn a little bit more about engineering. Because often, most people don't really know what engineers do. Unless you have a very close relative that is an engineer, you often don't really understand, well, what does an engineer do every day? Most people know what doctors do. There's a lot of TV shows, Grey's Anatomy. I really liked ER when it was on. Those kinds of shows, you get an idea of what doctors do. You also have a lot of shows about lawyers. You have a lot of shows about police officers and things like this, but you don't have a lot of TV shows about engineers. I'm not sure why, but they don't do it. So <laughs> and maybe we should think of doing that. So <laughs> yeah, it might be a little boring. I'm not sure, but. <laughs> Anyway, so, but that's part of the problem. And so for me, for example, I, my dad was an engineer. So that's how I started to learn about engineering. And when you look at the, um, our women in engineering that study engineering, about 70% have a close relative that's an engineer. So there's a strong correlation. So the fact that you've taken the time today to bring your daughters to this program is excellent in the sense that you are now giving them a chance to learn a little bit more about it. So unfortunately, our Dean of Engineering could not be here today, Adel Cedra. He's been our Dean for the last eight years. Um, and unfortunately, a, a close friend of his passed away, so he had to go to a funeral in Toronto. So he was very disappointed he couldn't be here because he is a strong supporter of women in engineering and in fact started this portfolio of Associate Dean Outreach about three years ago now to focus partially on women in engineering, but also partially on youth outreach. So we have a very, very exciting program planned for you today. I'm going to start off uh, initially and just talk a little bit about engineering and what it's all about and you know, the kinds of engineers there are and the kinds of things that they do. And then we, I will have a speaker come up who's currently uh, an engineering student. She's a fourth year student in management sciences engineering. At that point, we're going to get the girls uh, to go and do some hands-on activities. And as you saw for the people that were here earlier, the hands-on activities are focused on water this year. So we're going to look at, for the younger kids in grades 7 and 8, the development of a water filtration system. And then for the older kids, looking at sort of a rain catchment system. So uh, there's some pretty exciting activities. At that point, we'll just have the parents in here. We'll have another speaker who's currently working at RIM, uh, who graduated from Waterloo Engineering just over a year ago. And then we, we're doing something a little bit different this year. We've invited some of the parents from some of our current students to come up to have a parent panel because we thought they, they may be able to answer questions or concerns um, in terms of when they were parents of girls the, of the age that you guys have now um, or questions that you have. So it would be parents then talking to parents and they can talk about their experiences with their daughters and some of the things they might have done to encourage them and things like that. So we have a very, very good program. 
I want to emphasize that this is really not a recruitment event. It's really just about exposing girls to science and engineering and, again, what the career possibilities are. Now, if they did choose to go to engineering and they did choose to come to Waterloo, that would be fantastic. But it's really not about that. So please enjoy today, and uh, I guess we'll get started. Are there any questions at all before we begin? Okay, so why don't I start then? I've just created a little presentation, and I've called it, What is Engineering All About? Because as I said, really often, people do not understand engineers, and there's a lot of misconceptions about what engineers are. You know, the, the comic Dilbert really hasn't helped our profession much because <laughs> that's what people think of as an engineer. So this little kind of geeky guy with this pointy hair with glasses. Uh, anyway, so, so what is engineering all about? Well, what are engineers? Really, engineers are people who use science to design and invent new technologies to help make the world a better place. So there's a strong human interaction in engineering Again, which gets lost. Often when people think of doctors, lawyers, they automatically envision them working with a person. When people think about engineering, they often envision someone working with tools, not with another person. So it's a very creative profession because you're often coming up with new things that you imagine and then you then create. Um, so they, make, they help make life easier, safer, cleaner, and better. They design the technologies we use every day. How many of you in here have cell phones and smartphones? Okay, who do you think designed that? It wasn't a doctor. <laughs> it was an engineer. So all of these things, all the gadgets we use every day, and women, again, when we look at a lot of our girls, they love to use cell phones, cameras, all these kinds of things. So they use the technology, but we want them to start thinking about becoming the designers of that technology. Uh, they use their imagination to come up with amazing solutions to the world's problems. When we look at some of the problems that we face, for example, that Chilean mine rescue about a year ago, uh, last October, I guess it was, a lot of the reason they were able to save those Chilean miners was engineers came up with a solution of how to get the, how to drill that hole and put that little elevator in to get all the miners out. The BP oil spill. Again, you needed engineers and scientists to come up with ways to contain the oil spill. So these kinds of problems need real solutions. And you share ideas with the team to solve problems. So engineering is not an individual. In engineering, you often or you usually work as a team with a group of people. So first of all, the first point I want you to take away is that engineers help people. They help make life easier, safer, cleaner, and better. And I'm going to show you a couple of examples. For example, in terms of helping people, you know, uh, engineers often help design artificial legs or artificial limbs for people that have, may have lost uh, a body part. And so this is just showing an example of a Paralympic athlete, Steph Reed. Again, if we look at sort of artificial eyes and things like this, they'll be intimately involved in that. And that's not something you would normally think of, perhaps, with engineering, but maybe associate that more with a doctor or something. If we look at a lot of the, the advances in imaging technologies and things like this, again, engineers are intimately involved in this. So again, they create MRI machines and uh, mathematical tools to analyze those signals so that you can get uh, an image uh, of what the brain would look like and so you can diagnose and see if there's any problems. So that's one example of, again, where engineering is integral to it. If we think about a lot of the imaging, too, for other things, engineers are very, very involved in that. Engineers design technology. So as I said earlier, they really design the technologies we use every day. So again, we have, there's lots of engineers that work for Apple to create a new iPhone or iPads and things like this. Um, and it's not only about the device itself, but it's about the layout of the device and the user interface. So how that technology interacts and interfaces with other people. There's a whole bunch of engineering that goes on in that. They help people. This is just an example of our four, one of our fourth year students in mechanical engineering last year. And typically in engineering, in your fourth year, you have what's known as a capstone design project. So it's, it's typically a longer design experience where you design and then often build a prototype of what your new design is. So this young student decided to, to, to design and then build an exercise machine for the disabled. Um, and two of them were involved in it. And it actually got a little bit of local press. So there was a couple of uh, articles in the record. And this now has gone on to, to help some real people uh, that, that are using it as a way of exercising. We also design things to help the environment. So again, at Waterloo, we have a number of student teams that are involved in looking at 
uh, vehicles and transportation systems that can use other fuels besides sort of our traditional gasoline. And so this is looking at a hydrogen fuel cell car. Um, and this is our UWAF team, our U University of Waterloo alternative fuels teams. And so this is a car now that no longer needs to run on gasoline, but runs on hydrogen. So we actually have this here. It's over in our E5 building. And uh, we have a group of students that have been involved in that. So they really are some good initiatives going on to help the environment. I just want to briefly describe what are some of the types of engineers. I'm sure you might have heard of sort of mechanical engineers and things like that. But what do they really do? So all types of engineering at sort of the, the baseline solve problems and design, lots of different things, but there are some specialties within that. So if we think about civil engineers, and this is maybe something that you encounter in your everyday lives, they do a lot of the infrastructure all around us. So they design strong and stable structures. So things like buildings, bridges, and roads. And does anybody know where that building is down there on the, the right-hand side? That's, uh, yeah, somebody said that's in Dubai. So that's actually the tallest structure in the world right now. And there was a couple of Waterloo engineering, civil engineers that had worked on that. So that's really uh, sort of a marvelous engineering feat. If we think about chemical engineers, these are the, the people that will use chemicals and processes to design materials like plastics and things like that, uh, medicine, uh, food, and makeup. And so actually, there's a, I'll, at the very end of the presentation, I'm going to show you some pictures of female engineers. And there's one young woman that started Cargo Cosmetics. And she was an engineering student in chemical engineering. And she started that maybe five or six years ago. And has been very, very successful with it. Uh, so again, if we think about plastics, again, one of the innovations in plastics now is looking at plastics that are biodegradable. So now when you buy, if you need to buy plastic forks and knives, you can get ones that are, that are environmentally greener in the sense that they are biodegradable. If we think about mechanical engineers, these are um, the, the people that will design machines often and things with moving parts, so things like escalators, cars, um, electric bicycles, uh, amusement park rides, so roller coasters. And as you can imagine, in something like this, safety is a big concern. You don't want to be going down the roller coaster and then have it sort of uh, collapse at the end or anything. So, so mechanical engineers are intimately involved in things like that. If we think about electrical engineers, uh, these are the, the people that are involved with anything that uses electricity, and it ranges really from sort of, you know, uh, large power dams where you're creating power that we can use in our homes every day through to looking at circuit boards and things like that, designing computers, uh, devices, and things like that, as well as getting to things like energy. And so at the bottom right, that's really a picture of a solar panel. And so again, we're looking at alternate forms of energy as well renewable forms of clean energy. So things like wind turbines, uh, solar panels, and things like this. So very involved in that. And finally, environmental engineers. Uh, and again, these are people, engineers, who will design things to help protect and heal the environment. So they might plan recycling plants, uh, water filters, which is something you'll see a little bit about today. And for the, for the girls in the audience, you'll be doing something like that, designing a little water, water filtration system uh, or wind turbines. So this is just an example of some of the, the, the kinds of engineers. In addition, when we look at what's happened over the last five years or so, we see that the engineering discipline is becoming much more um, interdisciplinary in the sense that now, in addition to the sort of very traditional uh, disciplines, we also at Waterloo have things like mechatronics engineering, which is sort of a, a cross between mechanical and electrical. Because if we think about many of the things that we use and devices we use, it's an integration of mechanical systems with electric systems. So again, our car now is really no longer just a mechanical device, but it's a mechatronic device. Or if we think about a camera, again, most of the devices we use are not just mechanical in nature, but have a strong uh, component of uh, sort of computer integrated into it. We also have a program here, which was one of the first in the world called Systems Design Engineering, which again is an integration of many of the different uh, parts of engineering and it's focused on design. So you're looking at complete systems. Uh, we also have management sciences engineering, which again would have been what was traditionally industrial engineering, where you're looking at sort of workflows and things like this. So, so in, if we look at sort of what's happening today, we see a lot more of these interdisciplinary programs. And we also have something now called nanotechnology engineering, which is looking at things that are extremely small on the nano size, so 1 times 10 to the minus 9 meters, 
Um, and this is actually a joint program between engineering and the faculty of science. So we see more and more that at university we're starting to look at cross-disciplinarity between our traditional programs. So really, I want you to think about engineering is everywhere. And when you go home today, I want you to look around you and think about, well, where is engineering in my life? And this just shows you a couple of examples. And again, on the bottom right, this is a very interesting uh, thing that Christie Digital, one of our local companies, has just designed where they're using their light system now so that you can easily see the veins in people's arms. So you know if you've ever gone to the doctor and they're trying to find a vein to get some blood out of, or if you're a parent, you've taken your child there and it's difficult, this will make it much, much easier to locate the vein so that you can uh, take the blood sample or give the drugs that you need or whatever it is. So very, very nice innovation, again, led by engineers. And this is kind of an interesting thing. It's really what we call a mind map. And um, it wasn't designed by us, but by somewhere in the UK. But I liked it because it starts off looking at engineering, and then you can see sort of it's color coded, but it, it sort of shows in your daily life if you're walking around your neighborhood where engineering is involved in. So for example, if you look at the purple, you can sort of see the chemical, biological, and the kinds of things where they may be involved. So you can see it leads to the police because you may use a lot of forensic techniques uh, that are based on engineering. You could lead into the food industry, you could lead into agriculture and things like that. If you look at the, the yellow pathway, that's sort of the electronics, you're looking at communication, all the entertainment systems, uh, lighting, sound engineers, and things like that. If you look at the green, we head towards the mechanical, etc. And then if you look at the sort of the red at the top, we're moving into civil engineering. So it's nice in the sense that it shows, depicts engineering in a different way in terms of your daily lives and how it may interact with it. And finally, well, what do engineers look like? This is just some examples of engineers. I, of course, put our Waterloo engineering students on it, on the right-hand side. So, and they're all, all the engineering students, I should say, are wearing a t-shirt saying, this is what a Waterloo engineer looks like. So all those young women wearing those t-shirts are currently engineering students or graduate students. Uh, but then this is just an example of some of the other women that have been very, very successful with engineering careers. And so Hannah on the, the bottom left, she's the one who had uh, designed, well, developed that, that cargo cosmetics company and is, is currently the, the founder and CEO of it and has been very successful. So that's all I wanted to say to start with. I've, I've gone a little bit over time, but to, just to give you a, a sort of an overview of what engineering is and what engineers do.